All right, we're back with another episode today. I have a special guest, probably hands down, without question, one of the best guests for things you've not heard. Inside information, the inside baseball, the G14 classified stuff. So today, this guest not only is retired Secret Service, but he knows all the inside baseball of the first families. But first... I want to thank the sponsors. Head over to www.johnbartoloshow.com. Check out the list. There's a ton of great sponsors. And please, guys, if you haven't left a review, go leave a review. I'm asking everybody. I'm trying to get a few more reviews on iTunes. They're hard to get. I'm asking everybody listening. Please, go leave a review. And if you have the opportunity, please thank Full Quartz and Firearms. Scotty Full Quartz and make phenomenal stuff. Go check out Full Quartz and Firearms. They sponsored the week. Today's guest, the one and only... Al Story, Secret Service, retired. What's going on, Al? Good morning, John. How are you doing, buddy? I uh, thank you so much for having me this morning. It's a pleasure and it's an honor. Now, we have a little history. I like to put a disclaimer on this. We've known each other a couple of years. Uh, we don't talk every day, but there's, there's a few years in there. So uh, it's a pleasure having you on and having the opportunity to get all the secret juice and all the stories. Um, but first, I want to... I wanna, brief the audience a little bit on your story and kind of why the secret service because you've been around the game for a while give give everyone some context of kind of how you got into it and uh you know your years in the service and all that well i uh the the secret service generally speaking uh they look to hire uh, men and women with uh, you know prior law enforcement prior military or a combination of both that's that's not always the case, but that's kind of like the vast majority uh, of the workforce. So when I was in college, um, you know, I, I thought I was going to go career military. Honestly, that was my plan. That was my goal. And uh, I was at the University of Georgia at the time, and Ed walked on the football team, and I was finishing up everything, getting my degree in political science and government. And uh, I, I had the, uh, the great fortune uh, of listening to a couple of Secret Service agents uh, that came to campus. And when I heard their spiel, I was like, wow, this is, this, yeah, this is what I want to do. It kind of changed my whole outlook and my, my focus and my goals uh, on wanting to be a Secret Service agent. You got the bug. And that was, I did, well, without a doubt, and that's an understatement. Uh, everything uh, full focused on, on trying to become a Secret Service agent. And so I realized that, you know, to, to do that, my best chances were either, you know, to pursue, a, a, you know, some prior law enforcement skills or, or military and, I, uh, I did the former. Um, I, uh, I worked for a local sheriff's department. I grew up in Northeast Georgia, and I, uh, I worked for a local sheriff's department for uh, about a year and a half and uh, as a deputy sheriff, and then I was hired by the State of Georgia Bureau of Investigation, uh, the GBI. So primarily working undercover narcotics cases with the GBI. And, uh, you know, then about four years have passed, uh, and I, I, I applied with the Secret Service. But let me back up. I first applied with the Secret Service in uh, in 90, uh, 93 when I first you know got out of college and, and was working with the Sheriff's Department. Made it through the entire process, and they basically said, "Hey, you know, you you uh, you're getting there, but you're not quite ready. You know, you need some more experience." And at that point, I was fortunate to get an opportunity with the GBI, and uh, I went on with them and. Uh, worked another two and a half years, and uh, the second time I applied with the uh, the Secret Service, it, it worked. It jailed, and that would have been 1997. So I hired on uh, as a new special agent uh, in the Atlanta, Georgia field office, which at the time I was I was in Georgia, my my native state, and um, I started in Atlanta, and I started off uh, once I got to the academy. You know, everybody goes through FLETC. Uh, down in Brunswick, Glencoe, that's kind of like basic training for, you know, one-on-one uh, federal agent. And then I went up to Beltsville, Maryland, to our secret service, the James J. Rowley Training Center, JJRTC, where you learn uh, job-specific uh, skills to uh, become a secret service agent, you know, protective operations, you know, uh, protective operations driving, uh, basically working formations, firearm skills, uh, hand-to-hand uh, you know, uh, fighting skills, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of like police 101. Um, and then I started in Atlanta, uh, started off in the counterfeit money squad, 
Uh, did that for two and a half years, and then I was transferred over to uh, the Protective Intelligence Squad, which, you know, that's when I really got the bug for, uh, you know, working threat cases and, and working protection, because that's what I did, you know, just about every single day. Uh, and back then, Clinton, you know, was the president uh, during those years. And, you know, just about uh, throughout my career, um, you know, it was Clinton, um, and then it was uh, Bush, and then it was Obama, and then, of course, uh, President Trump uh, currently. So those were the four presidents that I had the uh, the honor and the privilege of of, of working around. And, um, you know, they, they all, they all generate and, and garner, uh, certain levels of threat. And, and that's pretty much what I did the whole time on the, on the, uh, PI squad, protective intelligence. And then the, uh, throughout the, uh, the career life cycle of pretty much any, uh, special agent, after you do your initial assignment, it's time to, to, uh, to pick a, a protective assignment. And that can mean, uh, well, back in the day, you know, you could do a former president, you could, uh, you could go the presidential detail, the vice presidential detail, you just had to go do your time uh, after you did your initial assignment. So back in, back in those days, it would have been uh, around 2002, I, uh, we had a new, uh, a new son, our new, uh, new baby was, uh, was on the ground, so my wife and I uh, stayed in Georgia, we were assigned to, I went down and I worked four years uh, with uh, former President Jimmy Carter uh, down in South Georgia, and you know it was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of trips to Africa, uh, mm. a lot of trips to uh, to Russia, uh, a lot of uh, you know he he did a lot of uh, humanitarian efforts, whether it be you know trying to eradicate the Guinea worm, river blindness, all these horrible plights that they have in Africa, as well as monitoring elections. That was uh, a lot of what his his goals were back then. And, and pretty much, I think, uh, up until you know, what he's doing now, I think he's still pretty active in, in, uh, in fly fishing as well. There were some unbelievable fly fishing trips that he'd go on to the far reaches of the planet. And uh, so then after that, uh, you do your, uh, uh, an agent does his, you know, his or her protective assignment. It's time to go back to a, uh, another assignment, uh, whether it be the field office or you can go to headquarters. Uh, at that time, I went to Birmingham, Alabama to the field office. Uh, and that would have been around 2006. So from 2006 until 2016, I was pretty much uh, in the Birmingham field office uh, and, you know, uh, primarily responsible for uh, threat cases. That's, that's what I did for the Northern District of Alabama, um, staying busy uh, working threat cases and then doing uh, temporary protective assignments as needed in support of the president, the vice president, you know, whatever protectee we had. Uh, and then along came the uh, 2016 presidential election, and uh, unexpectedly, I had an opportunity to uh, to go on the uh, the working shift, uh, the campaign for uh, Donald J. Trump, and didn't take uh, didn't take much thought uh, or hesitation to jump on that opportunity. And uh, for I was I think I was on the campaign team for about ten months leading up to the election. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, just, uh, just a fantastic experience. Um, it was, uh, it's something that I, uh, that I'm so glad I had the opportunity, so blessed to have the opportunity to do that. It was, uh, it was just a, uh, a magnificent, um, experience for me all the way around. A lot of travel, you know, you're, you're pretty much, uh, mm-hmm. 21 days out and, and 21 days home. You, you pretty much have an alpha team and a Bravo team. One team's out, the other's home and you flip flop. Uh, once, uh, obviously, uh, DJT was elected president, uh, 45th president, then, uh, again, I had another unexpected opportunity to, uh, to ha- have a promotion, uh, to go up to New York City and, uh, to start, uh, the, uh, Secret Service detail for, uh, Donald Trump Jr. and his family. And at the time, you know, there, uh, there's the, there were seven protectees is the way we started that, uh, that detail up in New York City. And um, it was, uh, without a doubt, uh, probably, well, it was the most challenging uh, thing I've ever done in my work career, but it was also uh, the most fun and the most rewarding. Uh, and and I, left, uh, I left my family, my wife and my two kids, I left them back in, in Alabama, and I, uh, I moved up to New York, and I had, a, uh, I had an apartment uh, right there on uh, 57th and 1st, uh, excuse me, right there close to... Uh, to Don and his family, and 
And so it was, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of give and take, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, Don's family getting used to a secret service detail. Um, obviously he had, you know, five young kids at the time. I think they were, when I got there, they were, you know, gosh, I think age two, uh, to, uh, to 10, I believe, uh, in, in age and, and obviously very, very active, um, you know, different schools to consider for his kids. Um, and then of course, you know, with, with Don and Vanessa, you know, at the time they were, they were extremely active and they were very, you know, hands-on parents and, so we had uh, we had a lot going on to put that uh, you know as a team to put that protective detail together from the uh, from the, 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 the excuse me from the ground up. Uh, but uh, you know, operating in New York City, that was uh, that was uh, just a, a great challenge. And um, you know, Don, Don uh, as you well know, um, you know, uh, executive vice president, um, you know, of the Trump Organization. Uh, you know, extremely busy. Uh, you know, they obviously the Trump Organization has a presence worldwide. Um, so we did a lot of uh, you know both domestic and international travel. And then you know Don uh, being um, extremely active uh, in his father's uh, you know not just the campaign but but in in this you know the current administration he he backs his father's policies. You know, it's almost like he. Um, you know, is, is a is a second um, representative of the president at times because he's so active out on the road. And um, whether it be you know governors, there were senators, there were you know congressmen and women uh, that would uh, request Don on a very regular basis uh, to come out and, and and speak on their behalf uh, for the Republican Party for various campaigns. And you know, up until you. If you want to, you know, any Secret Service agent, uh, if they're going to be relatively success, successful and and, uh, and happy, you know, at their at their trade, at their job and career, um, you have to you have to at least enjoy or, or should, I guess I should say tolerate uh, travel. And uh, and I've always enjoyed it uh, in my career, but um, you know, wow, I, to say that we traveled a lot with Don Jr. that that's an understatement. I mean, he. I had no idea he was going to be that busy um, with it, you know, involved in, uh, as you well know, with, with uh, you know, SCI, you know, it, he's very involved with NRA, anything, you know, having to do with the outdoors and, and the Second Amendment. Uh, Don uh, is right there and he's a huge pro- proponent. But also, you know, just, uh, you know, the, the involvement and to the degree and the, the depth that he, he is and he was when I was there. Uh, you know, with, with all things pushing the the agenda and the policies of the Republican Party, he stayed extremely busy. So that's uh, that's kind of my uh, my evolution to uh, throughout my career and, and uh, the way I sort of culminated my career uh, up in New York City as as the detail leader for Don Jr. It's a wild ride, and I think. Um as you alluded to, I'm aware of, you know, enough of what goes on. It's, you understate the travel out and the amount of days you're on the road. It's a lot of work. It's nothing to sneeze at. And when you get those opportunities to be closer to home, like you did with Carter, it's refreshing in it. And I feel that probably added longevity to your career. Right. And it's able to keep you um, on your toes. Now I want to stem into some of the misconceptions of the agency before we get to some of the administrations, especially the Trumps. What are some of the misconceptions of the agency that, that you hear and see, especially some of the stuff as we see it in the movies and, and things like <laughs> yeah. that, you know, some of the fun stuff. Well, and, yeah, John, you're, you're exactly right. There's been, you know, so many movies and even, you know, books written about, you know, life in the secret service and, you know, I, I can think of the ones that, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm a junkie. I, you know, when one comes out in Hollywood, I, I'll be one of the first. Oh to yeah, see we it. love it. We love it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you've had like, uh, there's been, you know, the bodyguard, you know, in the line of fire. I think there's even guarding Tess. You know, Olympus has fallen, and and uh, and all the 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 leading actors. Uh, you know, we we've had Clint Eastwood. Uh, I think you know he was in the, the line of fire. Uh, Kevin Costner, yep. the body the bodyguard. But I would have to say that you know you, you're absolutely right. Um, it, 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 
uh, it's far from being accurate. Uh, if I had to pick one, to me, this is just you know my, my personal opinion that that is closest to uh, a semblance of reality of what it would be like in the Secret Service. It would be uh, in the line of fire, and the part that really resonates uh, to being truthful is I can recall the scenes where Clint Eastwood, you know, he was older and uh, kind of reminds me of myself and my career. He was older. He was, you know, trying to keep up with, uh, with a younger protectee and, and he caught, uh, he caught a bout of, uh, it was like an intense cold or the flu. And he was trying to, to gut through a campaign. And, you know, now, you know, after looking back at the time I spent with Don Jr. with all the trips we, that we, you know, we had and when we took it, we, I, I kind of felt like that uh, on sure. several occasions. And the the thing with, you know, with traveling with Don, uh, speaking of the flu, you know, it was uh, whenever uh, I think he, he caught the flu uh, one time when we were on a trip to Texas. And uh, and it just so happened I, I got a respite from travel. I got, uh, excuse me, a few days off with my family uh, when I got back from that trip. And lo and behold, uh, I either called him or texted him a few days later when I was back home and I had the flu. And, you know, of course, he was recovering. I was recovering. And. So we were, uh, you know, we were pretty much always, uh, you know, in close proximity, uh, you know, on on those aircraft, uh, you know, whatever. And and uh, but I think that uh, as far as you know, going back to to uh, the Hollywood question, um, you know, it's uh, it's what sells, and and uh, there, there's a lot of, uh, of things that that uh, the Hollywood movies put it put in there that's uh, that's not true, and it's it's uh, somewhat sensationalized. Uh, and uh, kind of far from reality, but uh, but but the, the part that I would say is is, is very accurate uh, is, is the amount of travel, and and I can't I can't overemphasize uh, you know how much how much travel you you have uh, within the service, and you know one thing when I was uh, when I was still uh, in the field office and had the opportunity to to interview young young men, young women who had aspirations of coming home with the agency, um, you know, that would be my, uh, my first and main question, you know, look them in the eye and say, listen, uh, I hope that you have a specific uh, obsession or just a, um, uh, a, a sincere um, desire to do protection, because if you don't, um, you probably need to consider a different agency. <laughs> and then the second part of it is, I, you know, I, I tell them, I can't tell you enough how much you're going to be, you're going to be gone. You're going to be on the road. You're going to be away from your family and you're going to miss, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of birthdays, anniversaries, you know, holidays. And it takes, uh, you know, and, and along those lines, it takes a special partner, you know, uh, whether it be, you know, a, a, a husband or a wife that's married to an agent. Uh, to tolerate that because, you know, um, I mean, I, I can talk myself personally. My wife had to, you know, had to be mom and dad many times, especially when I was up in New York City and she was back here, uh, back in Alabama, and uh, and just did a fantastic job. I can never thank her enough. She basically gave up a career so I could pursue one. And, and it takes, uh, so that's something that, you know, the agency, um, you know, tr- tries to, genuinely genuinely look out for um is to pass that message to uh married couples uh or you know whether they're they've been married for years you know trying to come on the job or if they're you know newlyweds or if they're just dating you know get them together and and uh and really explain excuse me the um the gravity uh and the reality of the amount of travel and how it's going to affect their lives and um and and certainly it's uh I think any you take any Secret Service agent if they're truthful to you, especially ones that have gone through uh, gone through the gauntlet and crossed the finish line and, and have retired. If they're honest, they're going to be like, "Yeah, there there were many many times where I questioned, you know, am I doing the right thing, and you know, uh, should I pursue a different career that, that uh, that's going to be more user friendly." Um, but it, but the, the 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 reward of it, uh, you know, far outweighed. You know, now that I kind of look back on it, it, it's one of the greatest blessings I ever had. And, and it's a calling. You know, you're kind of led in that direction. Um, and I can't, uh, you know, compare to what, you know, goodness gracious, the, the military, you know, men and women, the sacrifices they make. And a lot of times, you know, whenever I would, 
I would be, you know, tired and fatigued and, you know, just beat up. And I'd call back home and my wife would remind me, said, you know, you, you don't have it that bad. In the grand, you know, scheme of things, look at what, you know, look at what you're getting to do. Um, yes, you're tired. Yes, y'all are, you know, traveling like crazy. But, you know, there's there's only a few people, you know, that get to, to do what you're getting to do. And, you know, just kind of bringing me back to a, a, a reality check. Now, I have to dispel a few myths before we get into some of the other meat of this uh, this conversation. Do you know who killed Kennedy? <laughs> well, uh, John, I can. Uh, I'm just going to go with uh, with what the history books say. Uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to say Oswald uh, because I uh, you know I, I'm not one of these conspiracy theorists. I mean, I know uh, you know what uh, you know what we we studied uh, in in, uh, in the academy about uh, we do look at different uh, you know assassinations and, and how they took place and, and steps that were taken by different uh, you know assassins that were trying to do harm and um, you know I, I don't have any any you know further information. It's funny you mentioned that, but when uh, when I've had the opportunity to to speak to to, uh, to Rotary clubs or the, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, you know. Uh, whatever, different school groups, I get that question a lot. And uh, I get that question, and, uh, you know, they also ask me, you know, are there aliens, and have you been to Area 51? <laughs> you know, that, that's what I commonly get. So I mean, that's my standard That's my standard answer on all of it. And uh, and, and so, no, I'm, I'm not a consp- uh, conspiracy so, theorist at all. All right, you answered the alien question because that was question two. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, next is uh, – do you silence whistleblowers? No, not at all. Uh, not not at all. And, and that's uh, that's a great question because uh, you know you're talking to uh, to a guy that you know I have a political science degree and I've always been fascinated, uh, you know, in politics and government. Um, you know, my family, my my dad was was involved in. You know, he was on our city council, which you know, small town where we grew up, but. You know, we've always tried to, you know, to serve. You know, my family's, you know, always been in law enforcement. My brother-in-law is in law enforcement. My wife was in law enforcement. That's how we met. And, uh, you know, my uh, my cousin was the sheriff back in my county where I grew up. My great uncle was the sheriff before him. Uh, another great uncle was the chief of police. So, you know, it's uh, we, we, we've been very uh, active in, in service. So, you know, going back to... Um, going back to freedom of speech and do we silence whistleblowers uh no i mean there's a fly, there's a fine line uh that that we do pay attention to uh and i can say you know without a doubt um you know don jr you know being around eric uh ivanka you know jared you know tiffany gosh you know uh, even baron you know all of them uh we we uh we we heard a lot um you know especially you know, just about every day, you know, walking the streets of New York City um, with, you know, Don Jr., he gets out there. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, would come up and say things to him. Um, you know, uh, I'd say a lot were, were pro, uh, you know, Trump, uh, high fives, fist bumps. But we also heard, you know, a lot of negativity, which uh, which I, I don't think anybody would, would find that shocking if, if you just watch the news and what's going on and, the way the 2016 election was. Um, but one thing that we, we do watch is there's a fine line. You can, uh, you can express your, uh, your, your freedom of speech, first amendment rights. But once you cross that line and it becomes threatening verbiage, then, then that's when the, the secret service has to, uh, to intervene and, and, uh, and you, you cross the line and you, you quite frankly, uh, you're in violation of, uh, you know, title 18 of the United States code. And uh, we, yeah. we uh, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, I want to come back to that. But my last myth question is, do you taste the food before they eat it? Oh, boy, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a tough question for me to answer because I will say, uh, you know, at, 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 at times uh, we have. Uh, we've and it doesn't concerned. count if you eat it because it looks good, Al. <laughs> <laughs> and well a lot of times i would say you know john the best way to answer that question is uh you know we we like to know um you know who, who's cooking the food uh we'd like to know um you know kind of you know check on those individuals um 
And as you go down, you know, the office of the president is a, is, is a whole different uh, level. Uh, you know, that's the leader of the free world. Um, but, uh, you know, with, uh, with Don Jr., um, you know, a lot of times uh, we, would, uh, we were traveling so much, and he liked to travel uh, domestically. Um, you know, we'd, uh, gosh, you know, we'd go McDonald's, Carl's Jr., you know, Hardee's, uh, you know, barbecue. Uh, I remember just pulling over at a barbecue restaurant in Texas one time. Uh, it's just whenever he'd get hungry uh, and want to eat, um, we just kind of pull over and, um, you know, it, it's really dictated by, by what uh, the protectees want. And, you know, generally speaking, if, uh, if, uh, if the restaurant owner, you know, didn't know that we were showing up and, you know, they wouldn't have the opportunity to, to do something nefarious to our protectees' food. Now, let's get into some of the juicy stuff, okay? <laughs> okay. Now, the family and the families are always suffer through, as you touched on, various levels of ridicule in terms of whether it's you know, work ethic, time put in, things like that. And it's, you guys have a unique perspective. You're on the inside. You get to actually see how they tick. And you brought up how, you know, you working Don's, you know, family and, and all that, how he's always on the go. Do you um, fall in or out of love with the protectee? because you get to see that inside baseball of how hard they're really working versus the perception versus the reality. Yes. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, uh, first and foremost, you have to keep, you remind yourself that, you know, Hey, what, what is my mission? What is my job here? And you know, what, uh, what is my, um, mission with the secret service? And that is, you know, to protect, uh, that protect the, um, from from all uh, threats, foreign, domestic, whatever, and, and and not only you know not only a physical uh, assault, uh, potential assault, but also you know potential embarrassment. You know that comes secondary, but uh, but there are um, but you do you know get uh, very close to them uh, just by nature, uh, especially a situation um, you know with uh, with a member of the first family because um, you know a lot of times the uh, the pomp and circumstance and the detail uh, is, is not quite as uh, uh, grand or robust as, as it is with the president of the United States. And so, uh, and then a, a lot of times with uh, the case with Don Jr., um, you know, sometimes, well, not a lot of times, it would just be, um, you know, kind of like the two of us, or it might be, you know, myself, and uh, because we would go to some very remote areas. Uh, in the United States and in the world, um, you know, uh, he, he very much enjoys the outdoors uh, in his world. And, you know, the, the rougher, the better, the more rugged, the more challenging, uh, the more he would be inclined and, and enticed to try to, to, to try to go to that, to those places. So the more time that you spend uh, in close proximity, uh, the closer you get to the, to the protectees. Um, so you, you, you do have to, uh, you know, constantly remind yourself, you know, first and foremost, it, it's not my job to be their buddy and it's not my job to be their, their friend or their confidant or, or, or anything of that nature. With that being said, you know, we're all, we're all human beings and, you know, the, uh, the close proximity that, that you have with them, you realize that, you know, they're, they're human beings and they're, they're, they're normal people. Um, and, you know, they, uh, they're, they're concerned about, uh, you know, uh, us, you know, they were concerned about me. They were concerned about, you know, the, the rest of our team that we had. They wanted to know, you know, about our families. Uh, you know, especially, you know, in my case, I was living away from my family and, uh, they would, uh, they would remind me, you know, how's your family doing? You know, you need to get some time to go, to go back home and, and kind of reconnect and, and recharge your, your battery. Um, so in, in, in all honesty and reality, uh, the, you know, the, the Trump family, they're, you know, they're very approachable. Um, and, and well, not just, and not just the Trump family, there's been many protectees that, that are, uh, they're very approachable and, and very kind and, and concerned about the secret service where relationships have been drawn. But I would say that, you know, Don Jr. and his family, they, you know, they always, uh, were concerned about our welfare and our well being. Um, you know, they, 
they realized how much the, they were traveling. They realized, you know, the long days, the long hours. Um, if if uh, if he was eating, you know, he would uh, he would call me over there and he'd make sure that that uh, myself and, and my team, you know, we we all got fed. He was always adamant about that. Uh, you know, there were times when we'd be waiting on him uh, at various events, and you know, uh, he would. Uh, I remember one time in particular, he sent uh, he called me in there and he sent an entire box of uh, of Trump cigars, you know, out to the uh, out to the truck. Um, you know, for the guys to, uh, to enjoy, you know, just, uh, because, uh, inside they were, they were having a couple of cigars after dinner. So, um, you know, and, and also Thanksgiving, you know, you're talking about the holidays, right. uh, you know, Don and his family would have a huge spread on, you know, Thanksgiving day. And, uh, you know, we, my guys would all be outside and doing their job, uh, as, as they were uh, sworn to do. And, and he would always make sure that, um, that, that everybody was fed and, and, um, and he, he, uh, I, sh- I say he, I mean, they, you know, wasn't just Don Jr. It was, uh, you know, with, with Vanessa, um, and, and then later on with, with Kimberly, uh, they always, uh, were concerned about the agent's work being because they, they, they appreciated the mission and, um, and they wanted to make sure that we were taken care of. So, so yeah, they uh, you 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 can't help but uh, but draw uh, you know relationships there. Uh, they're formed, and um, you know uh, it's it's you just have to to make sure that you you that that, that line is is, uh, is there where you're doing your job first and foremost. Because you know, let's face it, if um, if you if you take your protectee into a bad scenario where you have an unwanted outcome. And, heaven forbid, you know, someone or something gets injured or, or, or hurt, then, then you failed. You failed as a Secret Service agent. You failed as, as a detail leader in, in what you were uh, sworn to do. Uh, but beyond that, you uh, you certainly do become uh, you know, friendly it, with them. It, you know, you never want to violate OPSEC, right? And you're, you're always maintaining that. But at the same time, everybody's human, right? So, you know. That's right. That's the key right there. But is it difficult w- w- when you get – you know, sometimes these these guys on details or leaders on details that like they almost want you to be not human at all. You know, like like if Don says like, hey, guys, you know, when you guys break out or get pushed, you know, hey, you know, have a have a sandwich. You know what I mean? Have a club sandwich here. Take one. And you get that guy. There's always that one out that gives you the look like don't take the sandwich. And you're like, dude, fucking relax. Like, do you get that type of shit? Yeah, yeah. Some- yeah, that that's uh, that, that that is uh, present, um, but you know, most of the time, uh, that's kind of uh, dictated by the detail leader uh, or whoever the supervisor is in charge. And uh, you know, you uh, first and foremost, that like you know, w- when I was the detail leader, I always tried to make sure. And I know this sounds like a, a cliche, and you know, you know, some of my guys would be like, you know, sure he did, but I always tried to make sure that the guys and the gals were were fed. And they were taken care of, and and with you know with Don Junior, the time the times around him, it wasn't just you know uh, you know hey Al, you know get you something to eat. It was like make sure uh, all you guys get something to eat. And he would you know he would ask me uh, like you know he didn't have to, but he would ask me, so did everyone get fed? Did everyone you know get uh, get something to eat? Mm. Uh, because he because he understood. Excuse me, he realized the um, you know the 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 long days. I mean, he was going through it. Um, and if he was going through it, he knew that we were right there with him. Um, and, and there were times that, uh, quite honestly, now that I think about it, we were traveling so much, especially during, uh, the, uh, the, the, I guess the main times, uh, during, during the campaign season with, uh, with especially the, the gubernatorial elections going on, you know, he hit two and three a day. Uh, a different spot, different uh, campaigns, different uh, uh, different elections, different states, and I would have to remind you know him. I'd say, hey, you know, uh, did you eat anything? Or you know, hey, we haven't stopped to eat. Uh, you know, sometimes I would just kind of give him a friendly, friendly reminder because I realized you know part of my job is to make sure that he's you know still walking upright and, mm. and healthy. And if he wasn't eating, uh, I didn't want him to fall out on me either. Right. You know, that's right. That's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, I think I think it's always a balance. Right. And everybody always talks about, 
you know, you, you, you want to, there's situations and I know with Don, you know, cause he's a workhorse, he's always trying to bounce into every situation he can and, and be that guy. He wants to please everyone. And that's not always easy. Right. I, I have to ask, and you can answer insanely, honestly, Al, have you worked for a guy uh, that's not in the president's seat? Let's put it that way, or a former that's worked as hard as Don? Because I don't know how he does the hours. I'm going to be honest with you. No, uh, honestly, you know that that's a great question. And uh, and leading up to that assignment, you know, I've had a lot of traveling, but uh, and, and and going back and thinking about it uh, within the entire Secret Service, I think the last, I think 27. 2017 and 2018 I think I don't know I, I think I was told that I was leading the Secret Service in a lot of trips that we took uh, and, and I don't doubt that because uh, you know uh, I've got uh, I still have my journals you know where it uh, it's almost like a diary but I kept up with it so uh, you know I'd know exactly where we laid our head and I'd be able to fill out my administrative paperwork but uh, but no, I, I, I have never traveled like that before uh, with anyone uh, in my Secret Service career. And um, and I was amazed uh, at, at just the, the amount of travel that he would do. But, but I think you said something that I want to go back to, uh, John. He, you know, Don Jr. had a hard time, you know, telling people no. If they asked for his appearance, you know, for him to come campaign on their behalf, you know, uh, for whatever office that they were running for or, or to be reelected to, um, I don't, I don't think he ever really, uh, denied any, any request. It's not um, in his nature. No, no. He was always trying to go and, and, uh, and it was an insane, uh, travel pace and it, and it wasn't just flying, you know, <laughs> it's case sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes we were on a private jet. Uh, a lot of times we, it was domestic and, um, you know, that, that's, the, that's something a lot of people don't understand. They don't believe on these domestic flights. Um, it wasn't like we were in first class. You know, Don, uh, he just jumped back there with everybody else and, and coach. And, uh, and that's where we'd be. Um, but he, uh, and, and, and the guy loves to drive. Uh, he, he's not opposed to jumping in a long motorcade because I remember we, you know, we just kind of look at each other and roll our eyes and take a big sigh because, you know, it, it, was, it was nothing for him to say, you know, drive from, Salt Lake City to Las Vegas, you know, we did that right across the desert and, uh, it didn't bother him. You know, he's back there just working and, uh, you know, texting, uh, doing his phone calls, you know, setting up, uh, there's very, very little idle time with that guy. So he was constantly, you know, working as we were driving and, you know, we just stop refuel, uh, take a bathroom break and, and keep going. Um, so it was uh, it was kind of planes, trains, and automob- automobiles when I was there with him. Yeah, that ability to to face people over and over again always amazes me because I'm like short with people as the day is long, but it's just the northeast in me. I'm a Yankee. It's just that's you know what I mean. <laughs> and I, you know that's I think why he and I get along. He but but he has a tolerance at a higher level to deal with people. And I tell people all the time. I give him a disclaimer. Al, I'm I'm short because I'm just I value time and I'm just quick to the point. Sure. You know, and people you know take that a certain way. Oh, he's an asshole or whatever. But um. You know, I think that it's just about I'm trying to get from A to B in the quickest route possible. Like, tell me what you want and we'll get it done. Um, you know, he has that ability to play the game, which is why I think so many people want to see him run. And so many people eventually want to see him in politics. Do you see it going that way for him? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And, and we talk about it, you know, from time to time when he get off the stage and, you know, he uh, how'd I do? You know, he, and and. Uh, and, and and he's gotten he's so much speaker. better, Al. So much better. I mean, well, like, well, let me tell you. I mean, he, I, I, I was always impressed. I mean, he's a phenomenal speaker, and you know, he just uh, he, he he resonates and he connects connects with you know common people. And and, those, and and if you look, you know, you look out there in the crowds and the masses of people, those were the ones that would would gravitate to uh, to his uh, to his rallies and, and to listen to him talk and and to his campaign speeches. Uh, I absolutely see him running. Uh, at first, you know, he was uh, he was kind of standoffish about it and, and uh, noncommittal. But there, you know, there towards the end when I was with him, he was uh, he was more open to it. And you know, we'd uh, we'd go into different rallies and 
you know, people would be chanting his name, uh, you know, uh, trying to urge him uh, to commit to, to run for some, some type of office. And uh, I, I, uh, I would absolutely expect to see him do that one day. I yeah. think that's in his, uh, in his future. I've, I've made it no mystery on this show. I, I think uh, I know the path that I think he needs to go, whether or not he goes at Al's another story. Um, well, let's just say I think I think his his passion for the outdoors should find him in one of those secretary seats. Yes, and and uh, and and that's another topic that um, you know I grew up you know in the outdoors, uh, the shooting sports, fishing. I mean that's what we grew up doing in the uh, the mountains of Northeast Georgia, uh, where I grew up. Uh, and, uh, so it was kind of a, uh, a neat connection for me. Um, you know, it was almost like throwing me in the briar patch, if you will, uh, to be assigned to Don, uh, obviously I had a job to do, but goodness, if I could, you know, if I could be doing my job, you know, uh, out, uh, off of, you know, on, on a fishing boat, uh, sail fishing off the coast of Key Largo or, you know, in British Columbia, um, wherever we went, which were, were some unbelievably, uh, magnificent places. Um, that, that's his release. Um, that is his release from the pressures that he feels, uh, is to go out and, uh, you know, pretty much anything, uh, that, that launches a projectile, you know, whether it be, um, you know, shooting guns or, you know, shooting his bow and arrow. Um, he, uh, he loves it and it, it's pretty much a, a, a weekly thing for him. Um, he's very serious about it. As you well know, I know I'm, um, sing to the choir on this, but he um, he loves it and and uh, and tries to take it to a to another level just to perfect it. And uh, we we used to uh, we would enjoy watching him, uh, you, know, uh, you know, shoot skeet, shoot trap, you know, shooting steel, pay it for targets, whatever it would be, you know, and even with his bow and arrow, whatever it would be, he spent a lot of time uh, on the weekends uh, away from uh, New York City. Um, shooting, which was uh, which was a lot of fun uh, for the rest of us as well. He likes to train, and I think that's something that resonates with a lot of people. And I'm always a fan of guys who likes to guys who like to get out there and train. And I think that's important. And I think um, it's in his blood. It's in his DNA. He just enjoys. Yeah, learning his trade crafts, things he enjoys, and obviously he's he's an outdoorsman. He's much more an outdoorsman than I am. I mean, he's an outdoorsman for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, and, and the training part of it, I, I would watch him. You know, we would watch him as a team. Uh, you know, he you know doing CrossFit, working on his cardio, you know, trying to get stronger, just so you know he could uh, be better at his outdoor pursuits. You know, and that's where. Um, He's extremely committed, and he kind of you know takes it to another level in that regard. Um, so he, yeah, he, he's definitely one of the most extreme outdoorsmen that I've ever come across. Uh, yeah, there's he, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt, and he's very good at um, if it's an area he doesn't know, surround himself with SMEs, ramping yeah. up that experience, and that's the key. And we all tell people that all the time. I mean, uh, you know, I try to explain it now. It's hard for me, uh, you know. I've done the, I've lived through academy life, so I know formal training, but he's, he's ramped up his training and you can ramp up your training by surrounding yourself with the best of the best. And that's what he does in many ways. So, you know, he's able to, to develop a, a true skill in, in these uh, spaces and he's not afraid to go out and do a big backcountry hunt, go on, yeah. uh, you know, go, go, like you said, do CrossFit train. I know that that's truly important to him. I hear about it. So, you know, it's, it's a passion play. And like anything else, we talked about as you kind of age out or you get older, one of the reasons I picked up the microphone is you just reach a point where you're not 25 anymore. You can't, it gets harder and harder, you know, to maintain a certain high level of skill. You know, I still try, and, right. I still try and do the jujitsu here and there and, and everything <laughs> else. It's, you know, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, eventually time, time's undefeated, right? Al, it's just undefeated. It wins no matter what. I mean, Tom Brady's yeah. pushing that, but that's still. right. That's right. And that's why, you know, none of us are getting younger. And, you know, when I hit, uh, when I hit 50, I knew it was, uh, it was time for me to, you know, pursue a different, uh, a different path. Um, but yeah, you're exactly right that he, uh, I tell you, long range shooting, 
uh, if, if that is, uh, he would impress, you know, all of us, you know, that we would watch, um, especially out there in Montana, just, you know, just extremely uh, long range stuff. Uh, and, and he would uh, just really get the biggest thrill out of it, seeing how far he could stretch his, his capabilities. Uh, and of course, he, you know, loading his own rounds and, you know, the, the optics that he would have, um, the, the, uh, the different rifles he would take with him. It was, uh, it was very impressive. Yeah. Now in your time on the detail, there's an infamous story that was passed to me. He's played a prank or two on you. He's always a jokester. Uh, and not just him, but his brother as well. Uh, you know, whatever you would get, uh, uh, both Eric and Don together, there was, there was usually trouble. Uh, especially, you know, during the evening hours when they would, uh, they get you know away from the campfire and it was time to go to bed. You, you better have your uh, your senses about you because something was coming your way. Now, was there a time at a, a private club that there was an incident? There was. There might have been uh, a situation like that. You can around, either confirm uh, nor deny the validity of this story, but go ahead. Correct. Uh, but uh, as I recall, uh, and I should have seen it coming, you know, because it was. Uh, you know, April Fool's Day, if you will, uh, and and uh, of course I had uh, we were uh, around a private uh, club at the time, and um, you know I had my family with me uh, because uh, they had come down for a for a spring break to to spend some time with me, uh, so I was able to to, uh, to to connect with them when I wasn't working, and uh, and of course you know Don Jr. along with uh, you know. One of my supervisors who was in on it, it was a conspiracy before I even knew it. They had con- <laughs> con- concocted a plan, uh, you know, where, um, you know, where, uh, long story short, um, I had spent a uh, little bit too much time with my family. And, uh, you know, Don told me that he was basically going to report me to headquarters that, uh, that I should have been working. And, and I was, uh, I was spending time with my family. Um, and he had me convinced, of course, when he brings the supervisor in on the joke, um, you know, the supervisor says, yeah, you, you know, you're in trouble. You're going to have to answer for this. And I was literally, uh, you know, almost, you know, sick to my stomach and hyperventilating. And of course they, you know, Don being, uh, the prankster that he is, he let it go for, seemed like forever before oh, yeah. both of them let me off the hook. And of course, you know, I wasn't the same the rest of the day. I don't even think I ate anything, but it was. He was a uh, just a proverbial uh, jokester uh, at times, and you uh, you had to watch yourself. Uh, you know, he uh, I think I think in the two years I was with him, uh, as I recall to my math, I know he fired me at least at least thirty times. And I think the uh, the first the first few times he fired me, I was concerned, uh, and and uh, and I thought he'd really fired me, and my career was over. But then you know, once he fired me, you know, number twenty five and twenty six, I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, I realized that it was just his way of uh, of releasing, you know, some uh, some some frustration, and in, in the frustration, you know, you have to understand, John. There's there are competing goals between the protectee and the Secret Service and the detail leader. Uh, you know, if it, if it's up to the detail leader and the Secret Service, you know, we'll put those protectees in a complete protective bubble and isolate them from anything and everything that can possibly do them any harm. On the contrary, you know, if you're a politician, you, you have to get out there. It's the people that are giving you, you know, the, the votes that are giving you uh, the support. So we're, we're constantly at competing uh, agendas, if you will. So it was my job uh, to kind of uh, branch that divide. And there were times that, you know, Don always, always, and, and not just Don, the whole, the whole family, always appreciated the work that the Secret Service was, was doing. Uh, but it was the the differences that, that Don and I would have from time to time uh, was just the level uh, and the degree of assets uh, that we would that we would provide. I mean, there were times when you know he thought it was it was a bit you know overkill. He thought it was a l- little bit too much for for him and for what he was wanting to do. And of course, you know my uh, my stance on it uh, and our stance on it uh, was that we weren't going to take any chances and. Um, so that, that uh, we, you know, after a while, you know, I'd kind of laugh, but I, I would know and I would sense it would come, you know, I could feel it coming, especially when, you know, I would see, uh, you know, certain, um, police assets that were being used that were, 
um, you know, quite robust, shall we say, in, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of numbers, uh, and, and, uh, he didn't like that. And I would, uh, I would invariably hear about it pretty quickly thereafter. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, you know, he, uh, he's going a million miles an hour and you alluded to earlier, you know, the work ethic and the, the amount of work the family puts in and how hard they work. Have you ever worked another group that's, you know, in my lifetime, I said this to someone and this is, you know, I know this is going to sound cliche because my relationship with them is a little out of the bag, Sure, but, but I've not lived through another administration that I've, I feel has taken the amount of heat that they've taken. Did you see a lot of that on your end? Oh, Oh, without a doubt, John, without a doubt. And and just thinking back to, uh, you know, the little things, I mean, my goodness, I can tell you, you know, when I was there, uh, you know, I can just think of a few, uh, two specific instances that come to mind that, that really resonate that, that, excuse me, I'll never uh, forget. You know, at the time, I think, I think Chloe, uh, you know, Don and Vanessa's youngest one, I think Chloe was maybe two. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, she got, she got a threat, uh, that was, that you, you, you can read about it. It's on the internet. Uh, it was, uh, it was actually, uh, it came from, uh, from a, uh, an individual up in Canada. Uh, but, uh, but, the, but there was, there was threatening verbiage that was actually aimed at Chloe as a two year old. And then, you know, I think also to, uh, there was a situation involving uh, that involved Vanessa, where uh, you know a, a letter was sent to. It was intended for you know Don Jr., but uh, Vanessa had it, and, and uh, you know she opened it, and uh, and I was there, uh, you know, because I uh, I think I was the first one that uh, that actually responded to that situation, and um, you know it, it required uh, just full contamination, uh, FDNY, NYPD. Uh, the, the you know JTTF everyone responded to that because uh, you know we thought it was at the, it was just an unknown white powder um, you know we we, uh, we didn't know exactly what it was um, so there was always a concern and you know just the amount of um, you know the, the the amount of bomb threats to, to Trump Tower uh, and and you're talking about now um, you know you're you're potentially interrupting the course of, of, of a billion dollar business. Um, so, uh, and, and I, I can't even count the, the number of times, like I said, that, you know, we'd be walking through a, uh, public domestic, um, airport and, and people would, uh, would, would shout things and say things. And, um, I believe, uh, you know, there was a, a situation on an aircraft involving, uh, uh, Ivanka and Jared that was on, that made the news. There was, uh, there was a lot of negativity and, um, me personally, in my career, I, I'd never seen it to that level with uh, with, with this with this family. Uh, to that's just that's just me. What I'd seen, and and we did deal with uh, with a lot of uh, adverse uh, situations. And um, luckily, you know, the uh, the men and women of the Secret Service were able to identify, and mitigate, and do what we're uh, we're getting paid to do. Yeah, it's to me. It's maybe it's because of the closeness to the situation but to me it's it's insane i mean i know all those stories you brought up but i've never seen you know some someone at such the forefront that takes the amount of heat that they you know endure and i think it goes hand in hand with the internet and you know the growth of the internet through that time i think you know towards the end of the obama administration and into this one you know as the internet grew um you guys are insanely active now on the internet. You're watching everything. How, oh, yeah. how many of these guys, and I know that's an area you know a lot about, how many of these guys get caught that are operating behind these fake accounts? Because I'm not a fan of the fake accounts, Al, as you know. I, I think, I believe every person or every individual should be verified. That's If sure. I could pass sure. one law in Congress sure. tomorrow... I think every scumbag that hides behind a fake account, hey, I'm Joe Ninja X Y Z, yeah, yeah, they should be verified by their name because if you get the stones to say it, you should have your name on it. What are your thoughts? Well, and and uh, you know, uh, of course, I'm partial. You know, I I, uh, I I like to tend to believe that you know the Secret Service, you know, has done and continues to do a phenomenal job of of you know ferreting these guys out and identifying exactly who they are regardless of how many layers that they're masking themselves behind with that being said 
you know, uh, you know, we also have just so many other resources. I mean, if we, you know, if we can't figure it out, you know, within the Secret Service, um, you know, we'll we'll ask other, you know, uh, brother and sister agencies to to pitch in uh, to help with, you know, bring their uh, all the resources and assets that they can bring to bear to the table to figure it out. So I think, you know, the best way to answer that question, um, you know, whenever you, um, you know, you come at uh, the first family or you bring threats to any of the protectees, uh, you know, you risk the, uh, the full, the full brunt of the entire federal government coming at you. And, um, and the secret service has been uh, very successful in, in uh, being able to, uncover those layers uh to get to the uh, the true source you know whether it be foreign uh, or domestic and i you know I, I uh i i commend the ones that you know we have uh we have individual agents that that specialize in that it, it's uh it's an entire uh career uh path that they go through and i you know i can think of one in particular uh that, that operates in florida now that, that i had the uh, privilege and honor of working with and I mean, he could be making, uh, he, she, they uh, could be making a lot more money in the private sector, uh, but they're doing what they do um, because they're committed to, to this uh, to this country and, and, uh, and ensuring that the, uh, the protectees are safe. Yeah, I think, um, I think that the, this, the whole internet thing, Al, with that ability to hide behind fake accounts and, and all that rigmarole, I think it's a bunch of bullshit. And plain English. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, I know everybody says, well, free speech. That's not free speech. That's anonymous speech. And I understand that certain things require a certain amount of anonymity. But I just feel like on the Internet, the fact that it's almost like no repercussions, right? And people, you know, even an individual, let's back it off from protectees and all that even an individual and i i've endured this as someone who's a quote unquote somewhat public figure in my industry and my ind- industry is a very sure, temperamental sure. one and you know that you, you, you just this like there's people they'll go on a fake account they'll say some threatening thing or they'll use some threatening verbiage and the way these online entities are run it's almost like if they're in the mood that's what I like to say. If they're in the mood, they'll ban them. If they're in the mood, they'll take the account down. And people just get away with whatever they are. Now, if you have a registered business, even if you're a meme page or whatever, okay. Right. You know, all right, whatever. You know, call yourself a graphic designer. But at least have the stones to put your name. Because the way I grew up, I'm still part of a little bit of that pre-millennial. I'm on the line. I believe, like, you got a problem, go hash it out in the schoolyard. You know what I mean? No, and and that's the way I was I was brought up, John. Same thing. Uh, I, I don't believe in you know hiding behind you know, some fake name or, or something of that nature. I, I I'm, I'm just like you. You know, I I, I mean, I just I, do you do you foresee because I know you, you you know a lot about the cyber side. It, it, is that is that something that you could foresee coming or no? Well, and, and it, it, it's uh, it, it's really kind of it's being the debated as we speak because you know there are a lot of people uh, out there that, that uh, you know, say hey you, you can't infringe, infringe upon my first amendment rights and that's taking it too too far but at the same time um, you know, quite frankly you gotta weigh what's at risk um, you know how, how dangerous is this individual you know what is uh, what is our sense of um, you know how do we feel that this, this person rates as far as being dangerous, a danger to our protectees. And if, you know, if it, uh, I think if, if we have to you know, do, uh, you know, whatever it takes to get to the, uh, to the bottom line of, of who's behind you know, the threat. Um, and, and there are, like I said, uh, extremely capable individuals out there, um, not just with the Secret Service, but um, with us, all of our branches in the military. You know, FBI has a has a great you know cyber uh, unit that they, uh, from time to time, they link up with us and they assist. Um, you know, it's uh, we use each other's assets to try to uh, to keep um, you know our first family safe. You know, I could spend all day on this topic. I think you know that, but um, now you know you've entered a new phase of your career life everything and are you now able to follow up on some of that existing groundwork of friendship that you've had maybe with previous protectees 
Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, um, you know, now that I'm uh, now that I've stepped away from it, uh, we, we we stay in contact. Uh, you know, uh, and again, that goes back to what we were talking about before. Um, you know, you, uh, you you do develop relationships where you know you're concerned about them. Uh, you know, just like now, I mean, in, in this uh, pandemic that all of us are are are, uh, are dealing with uh, worldwide. Uh, you know, I've uh, I've been you know in contact with uh, with uh, Vanessa, you know, uh, making sure that you know her and the, her kids, you know, Don and Vanessa's kids are are, are safe. Um, you know, I stay in contact with uh, with Don and, and uh, Kimberly. You know, uh, how are they doing? Are they safe? Um, you know, do they need anything? And you know, we just kind of uh, it's a different role, obviously for me. I mean, I'm I'm retired now, and and uh, uh, one of my friends, uh, Mike, you know, he, he's running that detail now and Mike's doing a fantastic job, uh, uh, running the, uh, the detail, but, uh, but I can kind of look at it, you know, from a different perspective as a friend, um, you know, just, Hey, how are you guys doing? And, 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 you know, one other thing I, I will mention that, uh, that, that comes to mind too, John is, you know, talking about, you know, friendship and, and going beyond, uh, you know, what, uh, what you think is, you know, is, is required and expected. We, you know, unfortunately there were two, uh, secret service agents that, uh, that worked very closely with, uh, with, with Don and Vanessa and, and Kimberly and the entire, you know, family, that whole group, uh, that, that recently passed away, you know, from cancer. Right. And I can say that, you know, uh, that they were, um, you know, just extremely, you know, active and, and, uh, and, and, you know, visiting, checking on both of them, you know, calls, you know, going to the hospital all the way up to the, to the very end and, and, you know, going to their funerals. And, uh, it, it just, you know, speaks volumes that, uh, you do, you know, you can't help but spend so much time with somebody, uh, to, uh, to get to know them and, and to develop, a, you know, a, a relationship, a, a mutual respect, if you will. And, and I, um, uh, you know, I personally uh, will never. You know, I can never thank him enough for um, for for being there. You know, for for uh, you know, Tad Downs and you know, Lemoyne McCant on, on the detail. You know, both of those both of those agents recently passed away, and we lost them to uh, to cancer. And and um, you know, Don and, and uh, Vanessa and, and Kimberly and and uh, and even the kids. You know, were were. Uh, were connected and, and very concerned and, and just very distraught and moved by their passing. Yeah, it's 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 wild. It's it, you know you you have to do a, a delicate tightrope you know tightrope you know walk with everything. But you know you've entered the a different phase now, so you get to look at it from a different light. And um, you know it's it's a lot of fun in so many ways to look back and reflect on on the years of service and and. <laughs> you know, have these types of conversations because, you know, you get to meet so many cool people. Uh, can I ask, you know, who, uh, maybe through the years was probably, uh, one of the people you got to meet that you were maybe had a misconception about, or you met them and you just like, they became pleasantly delightful. Well, you know, um, most exciting person, maybe some people on the journey. Well, just, I mean, uh, I really had no negative experiences uh, with, with any of the, the folks that I was, uh, I had the pri- privilege of meeting with throughout my time with the, with Don Jr. And, um, you know, uh, just to mention a few of them, I mean, goodness, um, you know, Rob O'Neill, uh, that uh, obviously was, you know, took out Bin Laden. Um, you know, he, he's very close to Don Jr., very active. They would spend a lot of time together. You know, Mark Geist. You know, from Benghazi, uh, Mark spends a lot of time, you know, got to meet him. Uh, you know, Ted Nugent, uh, goodness, uh, uh, Judge Janine, uh, Shapiro, Sean Hannity, Charlie Kirk, you know, Candace Owens. Uh, goodness, there, there's, there's just so many of them that were, that are uh, just amazing uh, Americans and, and what they do and, and what they stand for. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I had a you know, being a political science major and a uh, an American. I was just impressed to to see that uh, you know the the things that they have accomplished uh, and the things that they had done. Um, and uh, and of course, they're like I said, they uh, they all were um, you know very active, and and, and I certainly continue to be very active um, in pushing the president's ag- agenda 
and the Republican Party and the things that, that Don is, uh, you know, is pushing as well. How do you, you know, I want to, I want to ask, you know, uh, there's so many questions I want to ask, but one in particular, um, how do you feel about politicians that get up there and, you know, th- there's a lot of press made about this. They're anti-gun, right? They're anti-protection with a firearm or whatever you want to call it, but they have protection via firearms. You know, is that like probably Al just, you know, totally your opinion, the most inane argument you've ever heard. Well, and again, you know, John, this is just Al's opinion. Yeah, you know, just I, Al. I, uh, just Al as, as a citizen now, you know, not as a Secret Service agent at all, but, uh, you know, I grew up around guns. Uh, you know, my family, as I, as I spoke, alluded to earlier, you know, my family was uh, extremely active in, in law enforcement. And, and so, um, and, and, you know, they, they were avid outdoorsmen, um, so we kind of, I grew up around it. I was used to it. I, I enjoy it myself. Um, so, you know, I, uh, the way I look at it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it, it's not the gun that, that's doing the harm. And, you know, someone has to be behind that, that, uh, stock and pulling the trigger. As, as you well know, there has to be a concerted, uh, effort to, to fire that bullet down the barrel. So I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't blame the gun at all. I, I think, uh, I think you know, as as a, as a country, as a, as a society, we need to concentrate more on um, you know mental health and and uh, and trying to reach people uh, in that regard. Because you know, I don't uh, I don't think uh, you know cracking down on guns is, is really going to. Uh, I don't think that's the answer at all. Um, so uh, you know, it, you're you're uh, you're talking to a guy that you know. Uh, I'm a member of the NRA and. I, uh, like I said, uh, earlier, uh, let's see, today's Friday, my son and I were out, uh, you know, doing something healthy to get out of the woods in this, uh, in this COVID, uh, shutdown. Uh, he and I went and shot guns, uh, I think it was Tuesday. And, and usually, uh, there's not a week that, uh, goes by that we're not, uh, we're not out plinking or, or trying to work on our skills, uh, you know, just to spend some time together and, um, you know, have fun and, you know, challenge each other. And it's, uh, it, it's just sort of a uh, family recreation, uh, you know, from where I come from. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I only bring it up Al because it's such a, it's such a crazy, uh, uh, thing that you get these guys, they get up in front of a podium and you've seen it a hundred times and they say, oh, yeah. you know, we need to ban every gun. And then they walk off and they have 20 armed security guards around them. I just find that funny. That's all. That, that's yeah, all. Yeah. It's just kind of a weird, you know, uh, uh, thing. And it's like, well, well, would you feel the same if you had to lose all of that? Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, you know, that's something that, um, you know, in in in, uh, in this world. Um, I mean, I, I can't think of any scenario where that, you know you'd want to do a protective detail unarmed. I mean, that's that's ludicrous. I mean, you. Um, you've always got to have a way to defend yourself and, and, and your protectee. Um, but no, I, I see what you're saying and, and it does seem to be, um, you know, a contradiction. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, I ask because you've dealt with so many crazies, Al and crazy is crazy is crazy. You know, when you deal with these letters or these things that come in, it's, it goes, it's beyond a firearm. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And you can always, you know, with, with these, uh, with these cases that we've, uh, in my career, um, you know, most of the time, um, you could, you could go follow up and once you actually identify the, the source of that, that uttered the threat, whether it be, you know, electronically or through the mail or through the phone or however they did it, you, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a unique reality whenever you have, you know, a group of secret service agents standing on your front porch you know, basically confronting you. And most of the time you get the reaction of, you know, they put their head down and said, yes, I did that. And I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I, I either had a few too many to drink and I was watching the news and I, I just don't like that guy. Uh, but I don't, but I'm not, you know, I'm not really going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm not really going to harm the president or anyone else for that matter. And that's kind of the reaction you get most of the time. Um, however, um, you know, there are, you know, certainly situations where we had to, you know, uh, arrest people and charge them because, um, as you say, it, it wasn't, um, uh, in, in a lot of these type cases, it's not that, 
that they necessarily would go to federal prison uh, as opposed to, you know, the uh, the mental psychiatric treatment facility in Butner, North Carolina. They, they, they need that more so than they need, you know, some type of uh, penitentiary. And, and that's what you'd see a lot of times. And, and I, you know, and, and, and unfortunately, it, it, it wouldn't take long, you know, uh, sometimes seconds and minutes of, of, of encountering an individual where you, you would just know um, that, that they, you know, that they need some help. Mm. And, and that's what we would get into uh, a lot of times with these threat cases. Well, you've said so much. I mean, we've been doing this for an hour and 15 minutes now, Al. We've covered so much. Um, well, we're going to have to do something else down the line. I mean, I think uh, we've peeled into a lot of things and given um, a lot of insight. Now, my last question or kind of, you know, I guess insight would be, you know, now that you look back and you reflect on the time that you've spent, you know, with the families, getting to know people, all these different details. Um, you mentioned the passing of, of some agents and natural causes and cancer and things, you know, do you look back and you're like, you know, you get to sit at the table and you have a great story. I mean, short of sitting at a table with an astronaut, right? You got the story, (laughs) you got the story in the room. Do you look back and reflect and is it just so hard to, to summarize? It it, it truly is, John. And, And, you know, I've been, uh, I, you know, it's just an unbelievable blessing, an opportunity that I've had. And, you know, it, it, uh, it sort of came at the, t- well, it did, it came at the tail end of my career. Uh, you might say that the, the first part of my career was somewhat vanilla and, you know, m- mundane and nothing exciting. And it was more, uh, you know, I, I was trying to maximize the best I could, the amount of time I could spend with my, my wife and my kids. But whenever, you know, whenever I had the opportunity, uh, you know, to, to move to New York and, and to work with the Trump family to, you know, to start the detail with, uh, with, with Don and Vanessa and, and uh, their kids. And, and then, you know, Kimberly came in into the picture later. Um, that was, uh, that was something that, uh, that, that, you know, still was just an unbelievable, extraordinary experience for me. It was, uh, it was just a great honor for me. And, uh, you know, now it, it wasn't easy by any of, by, by no stretch of the imagination. And, you know, not just the, the, the work itself, you know, you're, you're dealing with seven different protectees in, you know, the busiest, you know, are arguably the busiest city in America, um, with all these different trips. And then, uh, then of course, like I alluded to earlier, I was, you know, I'd left my family, you know, back, back home in the South. So, but, uh, but we made it work and it was, uh, you know, it was, it was one of the greatest things that, that I've ever had the opportunity of doing. And, and I still, you know, kind of pinch myself because, you know, we, um, my wife and I, we, we, we never missed a, an episode of The Apprentice, you know, whenever it was going through its fame and through television. And, you know, we had this, this preconceived notion an idea of, of how, you know, Don Jr. and how Eric and, you know, just the, the entire Trump family were. And, you know, once I got up there and started spending time with uh, with them and especially with Don Jr., uh, that, you know, I, I was, it, it couldn't be further, further from the truth of what I, what I thought they would be like. I mean, they're just normal people and, and they like normal things and, and they're trying to raise their, their families in, in a very normal way, as normal as they can. Uh, being members of the first family, um, but it was um, it was just a great opportunity for me uh, at a at, at really an opportune point of, of my life where I could do that, where I could leave. You know, my kids were old enough to where I could leave them, and my wife, and you know, bless her heart, she was able to to uh, to step up, and and um, and she was very supportive. She was my rock that allowed me to you know uh, to go travel to the U S and the world with Don jr. And it was, um, it was just beyond rewarding and, and really, uh, the highlight of my working career. Well, she's a saint for putting up with your country ass. So, <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're exactly right. yeah, it's, you know, I asked that because one of the, you know, 
you know, when you start out on social media and I would post these pictures of meeting these people, there's no context, right? So then I started the podcast and I think I'm what, 250 episodes in or whatever I'm in. I I wanted to put in a context, you know, you kind of start to face your own mortality in some ways, you know, as time marches on and you kind of start to think back and reflect and it all comes down to that dinner table conversation, right? You know, you're sitting around and, you know, like I said, short of being at the table with an astronaut, you got a pretty cool story. And I, I think, you know, it's, it's something similar. You know, I really just wanted to get the story out there of a lot of people. And I was always amazed, Al, on my side at the amount of people that did enjoy the defense industry, did enjoy shooting guns, did enjoy getting out there. And, um, you know, and you've been in some of my facilities and you've seen the different things I've done and been a part yeah. of. And it's, it's really, it's not what people think. And, and the amount of people that are involved and the amount of people that do enjoy it and the amount of people that do love it. And I know you've had some insight into that. It's just, it's, it, it's, it's very interesting. And until you start doing something like this, where at least you're getting the audio out there and you're having the conversation, people don't know, you know, and, and like, I look back and I look at it like a living diary, you know, and that's really all I'm doing is putting a living diary out there. And people say, you know, picture or it didn't happen. Okay. Well you have a picture now, you know, putting the audio behind it, it adds a whole nother layer, you know, uh, I I joke, you know, I don't think I can ever submit a resume again in (laughs) this business because (laughs) there's so much out there, you know? So there's a flip side to the coin that when you put so much out there, it's kind of, it's like a living resume, you know, it's like a living, you know, diary that just kind of lives for, lives on, you know, and, and it all sure. comes back because, you know, I grew up in an Italian family and, and everybody, you'd sit at this table and you, you tell your stories and you, you tell your tale and that's what it's all about as time goes on. And, you know, having a, a, a story like yours really puts a, a unique perspective on life and you've actually gone out and you've lived it. Well, John, I, uh, I can't, you know, like I said, I, I can't thank you enough for, uh, you know, having me as a guest. And, and I want to thank you, you know, for what you're doing, uh, you know, for the nation, uh, you know, for our country and, you know, telling you know, people's stories and, and just, you know, pushing uh, the American way of life. And, and I appreciate it. And, and uh, it's been a, a true honor. I'm glad that I got to you know catch up with you. It's, uh, you know, like, like you said earlier, it's been several years where, you know, we got to see each other quite frequently on the on the different tours, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, FBI, you know, NRA show, mm-hmm. shot show, wherever it was. And, and I miss those days yep. because I miss sneaking you know, up on you guys and trying to get the drop. Yeah. And, and you always did. You always uh, kept us on our toes. <laughs> I mean, that, that's good. As, you know, just like we were talking about, that's good training. Yep. Having, uh, having John, you know, sneak up on us, <laughs> make sure we're doing our job. Uh, no, I, I love the work you guys do and, and I'm always aware of it. And, and the guys that I'm sure might listen to this always know, you know, anywhere they've ever been any of my facility i'm always you know what do you need what can i get you guys it's not just about the protectee it's about all you guys it's a family and y'all you, you know working together and uh you know I, I appreciate you taking the time to share some of your stories and we'll have to do it again i mean there's another phase of your career we haven't even get into there'll be a time and a place to to talk about that i'm sure and and i appreciate you Absolutely. taking the time well thank you brother and i uh like i said i you know it was great it was uh it was a lot of fun and you know, one thing that I will say that I, that I want to mention is, you know, when we first started this detail, or I should say details, because you had, you know, you had Don Jr. up there, you had Eric up there, uh, you had Tiffany up there at the time, and then uh, Ivanka uh, at, at the very beginning was going back and forth, her and Jared to D.C. and New York. So we had a great team. Uh, you know, it was, uh, there were, um, I mean, these guys are still on the job. Uh, do, doing what they do with the Secret Service, but you know uh, Neil Haggerty, you know we had Scott, uh, you know Chris, um, you know uh, Brent, uh, you know we had just uh, Jason. We had a great group of individuals, um, Mindy that um, that we uh, we would work hard together, and uh, and then we'd uh, you know we'd fellowship together and, uh, and and eat break bread in the evenings, and it was it was just a lot of fun. They they, uh, they sort of became. We, we sort of became our own families because we had left our other families, you know, either they left their families in DC. I left mine back here. It was, uh, it was, it was great. And, and, uh, Neil Haggerty is, is another one, um, that, uh, to sing his praises, he was in charge of the entire first family. He did a great job as well. He made all this, uh, all this possible for us. 
Well, I can't thank you enough, and uh, I'm going to have to get down there and uh, spend some rock and share time with you. But you love know. to have you, man. Love to have you. <laughs> no doubt. Anytime. At some point, it's going to happen. Uh, I can't thank you enough really? for taking the time. And I want to thank everyone listening. I want to uh, uh, thank all the sponsors, especially Volcourts and Firearms, and uh, everybody at Volcourts and, and all the sponsors on www.jumbertotalshow.com. And make sure you head over and leave a review. Uh, I thank Al. Can't thank him enough. And, uh, and my hat's off to all the, the choir professionals at the USSS. Uh, I really appreciate them and everything that they do. Thank well, you, John, and uh, I hope you uh, you stay safe and healthy out there, brother, and uh, let me know if I can ever help you in any way, and I appreciate it. I truly do. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for you. having me. All right, brother.